fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rhythm. Both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh, he's taking like Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get involved. Very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my oh god! My god, what? Forty of the best sim racers. One hundred thousand dollars on the line. Rise to the challenge. This is the most competitive and sought after season in iRacing World Championship history. This is where legends are made. This is the Porsche Esports Super Cup. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Hello everyone and welcome to the iRacing V8 Supercars official series. This is the showdown. This is the final battle between Jake Burden and Brady Myers. 26 laps in very cool conditions here at Spa Francorchamps. It is sure to be one heck of a race with a pit stop included in the middle as well. We can expect extremely close lap times. We have seen them practicing all week long because for Jake Burden and Brady Myers, a race win and a bad result for the other could swing the championship in two very, very different directions. I'm Bo Albert. Alongside me is Mr. Zachary Hanlon with J.K. Kennedy in the director's box for tonight. For what is going to be an extremely long race, Zach, and long races around Spa, they're not too unfamiliar for us, but so much concentration is needed around a circuit like this because it's high speed, there's big braking zones, and there is so, so much room for error. Yeah, and there's so, you know, it's so easy to make a mistake in one of these V8 supercars full stop. And when you add that to the length of this track and the, the little nuances that you need to find in every which way, it's going to be very difficult for these guys to keep up the performance throughout this entire stint. Going to have a pit stop in there as well to boot. But one thing they're not going to have to worry about too much is the tire life. Track temperature very low at the moment, sitting currently at 17 degrees. And with the... Uh, daytime at 6.55 a.m. local. Uh, don't think that that temperature is going to come up too much, even over 50 minutes as we watch Jake Burton coming up through Eau Rouge and over Radion on his lap. Oh, that was very wide. Could have almost been a... Uh, could have almost been a off track there for uh, Jake, but he's continuing on either way. And... Uh, he really has to perform tonight. He's currently in the championship lead, 29 points ahead of Brady Myers, but both of these guys can improve quite easily on a drop round. So if Brady Myers can score 30 and uh, Jake Burton has a result where he doesn't improve on one of his drop rounds, the uh, championship can go the way of Brady Myers, but Jake currently in the lead and uh, looking very strong at the top of the leaderboard at the moment tonight is going to be all about numbers jake purden that was uh, sideways and a half through there and that is his second lap over and out but tonight is about numbers currently 29 points is the difference between jake Burden and brady myers in the championship but the number that is more important is the number one and what i mean by the number one is one second in qualifying time between those two drives at the moment brady myers on screen for zero esports he needs to pull something out here he needs to make something ha happen he needs to maximize every millimeter 
of this seven kilometer circuit, making the run to Puan Corner now. And he needs to maximize the entry into this corner, does it perfectly all over the curb. And this needs to be a perfect lap because starting down the back at Spa isn't the worst case scenario. The run down the Camel Straight will always, always open up opportunities for you. It is so long where slipstreaming can open up at any moment to get a nice pass done into Lacan. But if you start at the back, you're just going to allow those in the front to step away and pull away easier and easier. So for Brady, he needs to make this lap count. A 20.6 is not going to be enough as he's working his way now through Stabilo and onto the long run, heading towards Blanchimont, one of the most quickest, terrifying corners on the circuit. And if he doesn't improve, he's currently looking at a ninth place grid slot at best. And it could get worse as well as plenty of drivers are completing their second laps at the moment. Now exiting Blanchimont, the hard breaking zone into the bus stop chicane and he lifts it off a little bit there so i don't know if this is going to be a quick enough lap and it's not even going to count by the looks of it the countdown hits eight minutes brady myers ninth position on the grid that is an absolute nightmare to kick this one off zach yeah that's uh not going to be good for his championship hopes and i don't mean any offense to a couple of other guys at the front of the field but they haven't been looking like uh being in race winning positions throughout a lot of this season and jake burton most certainly has so He's got a big advantage here. He is the man who is going to take us away from pole position today alongside Evolution Racing Team's Jordan Ross. Sam Sutton is going to line up just behind them. He'll have James Scott for company on the second row of the grid. Andrew Gilliam in his Pursuit Sim Racing Machine will start out of fifth position with Damian Johnston in his Gone Rogue Motorsports Machine there. Corey Preston for JMSR Racing will start from row number four alongside Thomas McMillan. And uh, Brady Myers for Zero Esports Championship. Hopeful is going to have a lot of work to do throughout this race. He'll start from ninth and must essentially finish in first or second to have a chance at taking away the championship. He'll line up alongside Premier Esports racing team, Brian Borg in the top 10 position. Craig Jones kicks things off on the sixth row of the grid. He's got Thomas Hins for company in car number 12 in position number 12. Brenton Hobbs in car number seven. It's not quite a six, but he will see what he can do from 13th with Mario Vlasic and Mitchum McLeod completing your top 15. Christian Smart, a bit of a disappointing qualifying for him in 16th. A hell of a lot of shove. Zach Baker, Greg Sharp, and Steve Jansen make up your top 20 in this 26 car grid, which is rounded out by Sean Thompson, Joshua Pickett, Jamie Stobalt, Michael Kirpham, Rob J. Harris, and Josh Perwin. How will this go into La Source? It's a very tight corner. It is an incredible overtake opportunity. The revs will rise for the final time here in this season of the iRacing official V8 Supercar Series. The clutches go and we are away for race number 12. 26 laps here at Spa Francorchamps and will they all exit La Source in one piece? That is the question we're all asking. Jake Burden makes a beautiful start. He is nice and clean out of that corner. Chaos in the background though, all just getting very close to one another, but it does look like everyone has survived. Fantastic news, but the next challenge comes at our Rouge. Jordan Ross having to settle himself single file against Sam Sutton as everyone else tries to make it happen side by side between Brady Myers getting extremely punchy on the opening lap, which is what he needs to do. As you can see, there is a crash in the background. The number nine car is around and a massive shot up and over. He will go into the barriers. Somehow more cars are involved. That could have been oh so much worse, but we do have Thomas Hins involved in that. Damien Johnson was the car around as well. Jordan Ross attacking into Lacombe, almost contact between the two. Jordan Ross was very quick in AOSC, so he has a lot to prove in this race at the moment. Side by side with Sam Sutton, who is still trying to make something happen. Now firing it into Ravage, a very fast right hander that's constantly going downhill, constantly making the car understeer more and more. It's an extremely exciting opening lap. Andrew Gilliam still involved with Corey Preston. Almost contact, there is contact. The six cars going around, almost gathers it up and you can see cars going left and right. Zach, that was one of the most exciting starts of the season we've seen all season long and it comes right at the finale. It's very intense and a man who's been working his way through all these issues is Brady Myers. He's got to run on Corey Preston as well as a big wiggle coming out of uh, Puan there and he's going to have to sit behind him for this next little section here but looking very aggressive on this opening lap as you said very unfortunate for Damian Johnston at Eau Rouge there massive accident for him having to check up but Brady Myers has taken full advantage of this opening lap already up into sixth position and hounding the back of that JMSR car right there not the best run out of uh, Stavolo 2 there so he's going to have to hope for a little bit of a slipstream 
Corey's already fallen behind a little bit, so he's going to be a little bit slow as they come now through Blanchimont. And it's going to be very tough through this opening lap. A couple of cars probably running wide. Andrew Gilliam going two by two there with uh, another car. And Brady Myers not able to make a move into the bus stop chicane he's got a wider entry for the second part though doesn't quite pick up as much of that inside curb as Corey gets the power down nice and flat and uh i'm sure he's going to have a little bit of a go down into the source here making his intentions pretty clear Corey's late on the brakes there brady goes through pretty easily i think Corey knows the position there's a little bit of overlap and almost a touch but brady myers makes up another position on this early stage of the race and uh, is now up into fifth this is playing for keeps at the highest of speed with the biggest of stakes for Brady Myers at the moment. This is high speed poker at its absolute best. He is gambling with every moment at the moment and Corey Preston is not letting the slipstream go closer and closer. But his saving grace is an attack by Thomas McMillan up the inside. He will attempt it on the number 20 car. How will these two go? Brady Myers is off the road. Corey Preston's off the road too. The Mark 1 Esports car might benefit from this. Brady Myers might have got away there. A slowdown still. Contacts good by Mark 1 Esports. Craig Jones upside down and might be collected. Everyone avoids him as he is stricken in the middle of the road. Side by side is McMillan and Corey Preston. Brady Myers still trying to serve a slowdown in all of this. This is danger territory for Brady. Myers almost getting, oh, sorry, Preston almost turned there. Mitch McLeod benefits on this into the pool on now. A massive shake up there. Somehow, Brady Myers has dodged an almighty bullet that hasn't helped his race. His race is going downhill very quickly, despite moving up positions-wise. This isn't what he needs, but boy, oh boy, did he get lucky there, Zach. I cannot believe what just happened there. That was pretty intense. And Brady has lost a significant amount of time, as you said, making up positions. It was 3.6 over the line. Oh, uh, at the beginning of this lap, 7.1, and McLeod's gone round the outside of McMillan there. It's not going to work for him, though, and now he's hung out to dry. Brian Borg is going to get through, and uh, Mitchell McLeod's going to try and give Brian a little bit of a bump draft down the back straight here, and Andrew Gilliam down the right-hand side of almost both of them. Oh, a little bit of a touch as they come in the Blanchimont. Can't go through the entry, and Brian Borg's got off the track, and I cannot believe that he managed to snake through that tiny little gap. I mean, not that he had anything to do with it, but that was very intense racing from quite a few guys there. We got a replay on screen, thanks to Modem Simulation. Check out Gilliam on the right there, and Mitchell McLeod actually bump-drafted Borg into a spin there, <laughs> and both of those guys ran very wide. Brendan Hobson, wise old head on those shoulders, backing right out of it and saying, no, thank you, lads. I'll, uh... I'll stick back from that for a little bit, and uh, that was pretty crazy. But meanwhile, up at the front of the field, Jake Burton just passing a little bit of traffic there. I think that's uh, Mario, Mario Blasic. So um, leaders coming through a little bit of traffic, though. Mario has consistently gotten out of the way very nicely, and uh, I'm sure we won't have any problems from him. You can see that gap from Brady Myers as Mitchell McLeod and Andrew Gilliam are going side by side once again, not holding much between them, and Mitchell is going to just back out of that one. It's already made up quite a few spots already, though. Has Mitchell McLeod 15th up in the eighth position. So the Torque Inc. driver having a great run, but just deciding to settle back out of that one. Yeah, that was, I think, a wise choice by Mitch McLeod. That was only going to get dicier and dicier. And uh, Andrew Gilliam was already on the absolute limit of grip there. But what we might do is just a little bit of a throwback Thursday here. Even though it's not a Thursday, it is indeed a Monday for the soft, the final time of the season. And we'll have a look at a replay of the race start in just a moment's time. Here we go, Motum Simulation replay up on screen because it was a chaotic start. There was so much going on. As you can see there, the 26 cars on the grid that we have. Jake Burden was our pole sitter. He had to make a good start. You can actually see the wheels wobble just for a second there of Jordan Ross as uh, he was trying to preempt the start. And uh, the lights will go out right about now. And it was a great start by Jake Burden. Just absolutely perfect traction. No challenge until the source, which is exactly what you need as the pole sitter. The headlights on all the cars looking beautiful at the moment. iRacing really needs to make them flashable, in my opinion. But this is where things go a lot wrong for Gone Rogue Motorsports. And it did get very rogue out there. It was a roguish move by Brady Myers. You can see side by side into Ar Rouge. It was always going to end a little bit dicey there. But Brady had a championship at stake. And you can see a big moment, a big sideways moment. And then just gets a bit of a hip check. Goes spinning around. 
And three, two, one, a big collection there from all the other cars. Thomas hit absolutely nowhere to go. So just an innocent victim in all of that. We'll go on board with Thomas for Ratu Racing. You can see he's got uh, Brenton Hobson just in front of him. So his vision was completely impeded. How was the moment through our Rouge? But then the moment gets a whole heap worse. And unfortunately, I think Hinzi just had a car on his inside. So even though it looked like he drove straight into him, I don't think Hinzi had any other choice. So a nightmare for him there. So for Hinzi, his season doesn't end on the high that he perhaps would have wanted. Jake Burden, though, uh, he was off to a very strong start. But I have to say, the speed of John Ross is something incredible. The overspeed up the inside, late on the brakes, a challenge for our race lead. John Ross was quick in AOSC. He knows how to race around Spa. He knows how to overtake to that was textbook stuff by the Evolution Racing Team driver. Jake Burden gonna try and make this one with a bit of a cutback, but he's gonna have to go around the outside. Sim Sutton saying hello. Might wanna buy into the action on this as well with his V8 stops uh, teammate as well. So how is this gonna happen in the next few corners? Cause Burden has to set something up here. He has to get a run on the Evolution Racing Team. But I have to say, Zach, all through AOSC, which I was actually lucky enough to compete in, those Evolution Racing Team cars are hooked up around here in race trim. John Ross, he could be the dark horse that helps Brady Myers out just a little bit. Yeah, well, it's uh, working well at the moment. He's obviously got very good speed in that car right now. And, you know, Evolution Racing Team are a well-established, long-time purveyor of these V8s. And uh, they most certainly know how to set them up. I'm sure they've got a lot of manpower going into those setups which is going to be helping as well and Brady Myers the gap has started to come down to the leader obviously a little bit of bickering up the front there is going to help him so it's not all over we're still very early into this race I can't believe it's only been four laps coming up to nearly five now but uh yeah Jake Burton I mean he's possibly I mean he's he can relax a little bit so long as Brady doesn't come first or second, he's kind of safe. So he doesn't have to go too crazy, but he does need to stay ahead of Brady. So he can't, he really can't get involved in anything too, uh, you know, full on. Otherwise he's going to maybe have an accident. And uh, as soon as Brady's ahead of him, that's when he's really going to start to panic. So he can probably just be pretty cruisy for the opening stint of this race. Just ensure that he keeps ahead of Brady. And that's all he really needs to do. So Jordan Ross might uh, be able to pick up from that relaxation of uh, Jake Burton and he had a little bit of an advantage here. But uh, yeah, that Evolution Racing Team car looking strong and a great move for the lead as well. Yeah, it absolutely was. But we'll just see how powerful the slipstream is for Jake Burton. Closing and closing. But it's a lot more powerful for Sam Sutton. It has to be said. Already passed on the brakes. I won't even get excited about that one. Sam Sutton, just so much more confidence on the brakes there to pull the car up in another comp. And another pass done. And the issue at the moment for Jake Burden is that James Scott, another Evolution Racing Team car, is just behind. So if those ERT cars are really coming to the fore, well, then that's a whole lot of an issue because there is another one just waiting in the wings at the moment. But this top four is definitely one of the better uh, battle packs to be keeping an eye on at the moment you can see just looking a little bit dicey on the run into Puan which is not an overtaking opportunity at all but current championship standings are on screen at the moment Burden 1782 and just some 50 odd points behind is Brady Myers so if you think this championship is already decided because Brady Myers is a bit down the field you could not be any more wrong there is still every chance that this race turns on its head because as you can see that the Zero Esports driver Six seconds is a big margin, but when we have 21 laps left, that is a lot of racing to go. When it's 21 laps of Spa, this race has barely even started, Zach. Yeah, I mean, we've still got at least 40 minutes worth of racing left, and six seconds is a fairly big margin, but, I mean, one small mistake here can send you off into the wall. It can put you into a spin which can cost you three or four seconds or maybe even more if you turn you know if you end up the wrong way or something like that so yeah there's still every possibility here that brady's going to be able to bring it back and he's showing good pace he's definitely one of the faster cars on track at the moment fastest car at the moment is jordan ross as they come across the line just seeing uh 
In fact, Brady's last lap was not particularly great, so he's going to have to pick it up. But uh, there's a lot of margin that can be found around this track, so he just really has to concentrate, making sure that he hits all of his markers. Don't worry about the gap to the guys up the front. Just hit every marker as best as he can, and uh, he'll claw him back in if he just keeps on, uh, if he just keeps his driving really smooth. Because these guys are probably going to have quite a bit of a battle maybe not so much now but as we get into the pit stop phase and just after the pit stop phase there's a lot of time to be won and lost there also absolutely there is but look at this Corey Preston doesn't care about no championship he wants positions trying to find a way past Brady Myers no way through at the moment just yet so he will have to wait for another day but look at the body language of the Zero Esports car it's not happy is it it's just not content Bra uh, Jake Burden also running a bit wide into Ravage as well almost opened the door up for James Scott They'll sort of walk through the door though, just decides to stand outside, ring the doorbell a couple more times. But uh, Brady Myers still under massive threat. So what can he do over the next few laps to build this margin back to that top four? The gap between them is still quite large at the moment. And like you say, Zach, his last lap was just, it was matching Jake Burden. But Jake Burden was getting passed by cars, so naturally his time's going to be a little bit slower. So he has to find something here. He has to manage some way to just find a switch and really light those tires on and make a nice run towards the first pit stop. But the question I have looming over my head right now, Zach, Jake Burden, has he gone too hard at the start of the race and is burning up his tires? Because I'm looking at the Evolution Racing Team car of Jordan Ross right now, and I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but the way he is controlling his tires, I think is just perfect. He's getting quicker and quicker as the stint goes on. He's managed to break himself away from Samsung already. He is driving beautifully at the moment. I have to say, if this is the kind of form we can expect from Jordan Ross in the coming future, that's the commentator's curse. He locks up into the bus stop. But if we can expect this kind of form from Jordan Ross more often, I reckon next season, he could be our championship protagonist. Ah, oh, absolutely. I mean, Jake Burton's very quick in these Fiat supercars. Multiple time race winner, Scops race winner. Um, and champion official series champion as well so um, if you can stay ahead of him and, and, and one up on him then you've got every opportunity to do it time and time again and as you said Bo he's really got good control of that car that lock up he had into the bus stop I mean it's going to maybe put a little bit of temp into the tyre but didn't you know he only missed the apex by about 30 centimetres or probably less than that so he uh didn't really lose much braking performance out of that and he has worked a little bit of a gap out so he's got to get a little bit further away in these uh twisty sections here so that he can break that draft he just really needs a solid run solid lap or two just to get out of that one second range because even if you're one second down coming out of the source or even 1.1 seconds you can be you know 0.7 or or 0.6 by the time you get up to uh, the next set of corners. And then you basically have to lose half a second over the next uh, curvy bit to, to really uh, give up your advantage. So he really has to work hard in these twisty sections to just get away. Um, but he is looking very good, two tenths of a second faster than most of his other competitors. And uh, Jake Burton's still looking pretty good I think that if anything, it looks like Brady Myers is the one who's maybe gone a bit hard a bit early. I mean, remember, he had to overtake four odd cars in the early stages of that race. And uh, he has been fighting with Corey Preston still as well. He's been getting pretty loose and I've been riding on board with him for a bit as well. He is really trying to make up as much time as he possibly can. So uh, maybe want to come into the pits a little bit early. We've seen the undercut work, as you can see there, just a little bit of... Uh, opposite lock coming out of a very long right hander there so Brady Myers I think this is the time where he's going to have to try and utilize a massive undercut here and uh, try and really one up his competitors well he's gonna have to try something isn't he it's just not working for him at the moment he's not clawing that gap back to James Scott Jake Bernard and Sam Sutton who are in that little train of three and it's only a train of three because one second is the margin for Jordan Ross at the moment doing a great job out in front you can see they're breaking into the source he's just able to skip away that car looking very nice but jake burden is getting a little bit closer to the back of your second place driver sam sun as well but so is the battle pack behind corey preston under quite a fair bit of pressure at the moment with uh i think that's andrew gilliam right up his clacker as they make their way down towards our rouge and it's going to be a very interesting run down the camel straight 
as to what Andrew Gilliam is able to pull out because if you can nail the exit of our Rouge, there is so much you can achieve at the end of the Camel straight, but it's not the best run for Andrew Gilliam, so he's going to have to try something over the next few laps to really make this happen, and it's just not working for him. As uh, you can see, just looking out a little bit, wants to make a move, but unfortunately, Andrew Gilliam just not close enough at the moment. So lit on the brakes, almost finds the rear bumper of Corey Preston there as well. So we know Andrew Gilliam not afraid to touch the brakes, but at the same time, Joshua Pickett is not afraid to touch the tire wall by the looks of it. Side by side into our Rouge. This was never going to go well. Apologies for the background music at the moment, but the massive contact and Joshua Pickett went so hard into the tire wall at our Rouge. That is a horrible accident into the wall there and hopefully all is well with him because that was the worst kind of accident turned around right at the apex in our rouge that was a scary incident but we do go back up front to jake burden and sam sutton of course teammates in the uh, scops championship for this season had a fantastic result at road atlanta which i won't uh, uh, spoil for you guys as i've just seen corey preston has just swapped positions with andrew gilliam and that was looking pretty forceful on what i could see I'm just wondering if that was a slipstream or if something else has happened. Uh, I, I think that was just legitimately a very aggressive uh, let by uh, by Corey Preston. I think he's just pretty much stamped on the brakes and Andrew Gilliams just had to avoid action there. So uh, he managed to keep it all well and good. But uh, nonetheless, they will continue on their battle with Andrew Gilliam. Now the car up in front and he'll be chasing down Brady Myers. And this will be interesting because if Andrew Gilliam has the pace over Brady Myers, is Brady Myers better off letting Andrew go and following in his way. Yeah, well, Andrew's shown really good speed in these races. This season has been a little bit lackluster compared to last season where we saw him pick up a couple of wins, uh, but he's definitely got a lot of pace in that pursuit sim racing car. So yeah, it's definitely possible. We'll have to see if he does start to catch up to Brady. Might be able to help Brady a little bit, but I mean, just getting involved in any battle for Brady is not ideal at the moment. He's already dropped uh, another basically two and a half seconds to the leader um, in the last couple of laps so he's not lapping as fast as he should be last time round was actually not too bad 220.899 compared to our leader jordan ross on a 220.7 uh, so only you know 10 1.3 tenths there um that he really let go but um it hasn't been great for a little bit as sam sutton now is looking a little bit under pressure having to to drive fairly defensively he just ran a little bit deep there and now we might see jake burton have a little bit of a push he's not going to do it still probably thinking about victory at this point so we're still quite early in the race almost coming up on the uh halfway mark in about three or four laps uh which is when we will expect quite a few of these races to start pitting and start thinking about strategy but for the time being, Jake Burton's still involved in this battle. Sutton's uh, fallen off Jordan Ross quite a little bit now. Jordan has now exceeded the slipstream margin ever so justly. Uh, 1.4 seconds is the gap from him to Sam Sutton. So I suspect that now we will actually see uh, Sam and Jake falling away a little bit further from our race leaders they're not able to claw back as much of that advantage with the slipstream we might even see them losing about three to four tenths a lap uh depending on if they decide to battle or not as well it could be even more than that and jake burton's got a very good run you can see he's definitely got the slipstream as he comes down into blanchimon very early on the turn in for jake burton actually got a much nicer run through the corner and he might go for a little move here backing out and saving a little bit of fuel so he's definitely content behind sam sam's running enough pace for him at the moment to save a little bit of fuel and uh, go for a bit of pit strategy here which we have seen jake burton do quite success successfully throughout this season yeah he definitely has he's not afraid to just mix it up a little bit and go for a different alternative strategy which sometimes in these positions is what you have to do as uh, we get the leaders across for yet another lap. And I have to say, this is the most bunched up they've been for a little while as they make their way down through to uh, our Rouge, a very, very fast section of track at the moment. Sam Sutton uh, trying to make the best of a run, but look at the run uh, Jake Burton has got in comparison. He's so much quicker over the hill. And now in the drop, if he's going to go for any kind of move, now is the time to do it. And from the body language of the car, it doesn't look like it until now. Lines up for a move. Lines up late on the brakes, and Jake Burton is just about through, and through he goes into position number two. 
So does Jake Burton now, after just keeping it a little bit more quiet for a few laps, just relaxing the tires, trying not to stress the car all too much, does he have the pace to go and hunt down Mr. Jordan Ross, currently in your race lead, as James Scott at the moment lurking in the background. What can he do against Sam Sutton? He's been a lot more passive in this battle than I might have expected. I thought maybe, just maybe, he'd be willing to settle back a little bit and maybe go for opportunities. But it has to be said, he really has just been happy and content sitting in position number four at the moment. But Jake Burton, the body language of his car already suggests he is pushing, trying to chase down 1.9 seconds to your race leader at the moment. They make their way out of pool on. And this is all about what can Jake Burton can do right now. If he wants to define and really make his stamp on this championship, which he is currently leading in the final round over this driver, Brady Myers, he has to make something happen now. I think the gap between Brady Myers and James Scott has come down, but only by a single tenth of a second. The points on screen there with that adjusted pass that uh, puts Jake Burton into position number two, boosts him up to 17, 1,791 points. So a little bit better there for Jake Burton in regards to the championship situation, but he still leads nonetheless. And I don't want to steal a quote from the Fast and the Furious, but it, does, but it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Because winning is still winning. And at the moment, James Scott, I said he was getting passive in this battle. He's looking a little bit more aggressive now. Sam Sutton perhaps struggling a lot more with tires than we expected. And James Scott starting to sniff an opportunity. Gets a little bit sideways out of the bus stop chicane. Maybe an opportunity into La Source. Maybe an opportunity at the end of the Camel Straight. And he chooses to wait for Lacom. Yeah, this is really helping up. This will really help Brady Myers as well. Jake Burton was lucky enough to... Uh get a, a pass up the up the straight at the top of the hill there and uh, that didn't really cost them too much time probably only cost him about half a tenth uh, which is definitely uh, probably why he took that opportunity to go past Sutton but as you said Bo James Scott looking pretty good at the moment I think a lot of these guys are not gonna play too much of a game right now we're gonna come into the pits very shortly and I think that uh, if any of these guys start getting too larry right now they know they'll give up the advantage that they have the, to the cars around them so they really just need to work together for the next lap or two not give up too much time because i imagine that quite a few of these guys will want to start going for the undercut and they've also just got brady myers behind them in case anything goes wrong also mitchell mcleod getting past there by steve jansen for 10th position and Mitch has had a couple of troubles throughout this race, having to give up another position there. Jamie, uh, that's Sean Thompson, sorry, in his KRF Motorsports machine, racing with Zach Baker. And a nice move there from Sean puts him up into 14th position as we see Jamie Stovold going down the inside of, uh, I think that's uh, Greg Sharp in his uh, Stealth Simforce car. So. Uh, that's Brian Borg, sorry, who went through. So good job there from Brian and uh, Mitchell McLeod chasing down Steve Janssen once again. Mitchell's had a really good pace. He was up as high as seventh earlier, so something's obviously happened to him in the last couple of laps. But uh, this little battle pack at the back of the race has uh, been forming for quite a while. We've had our eyes so much on the front of this race because of the championship but these guys are still battling very hard and brian borg obviously uh had an incident earlier on and is now starting to work his way back through the pack as well brady myers gap still uh quite significant to jordan ross at least it's uh, 9.8 seconds so he's losing buckets of time to the leader but he's not losing too much time to the pack ahead he's actually clawed in a little bit more time on that lap about three tenths of a second and jake burton uh i believe has come in oh he's lost a spot actually to james scott and sam sutton so i don't know if he had a slowdown there or something but uh he's decided to or he's had to give up two positions there. We'll get a modem simulation replay and see. Oh, massive, massive moment into turn one on the rear brakes, Zach. I've come back on the replay and looked at it, and you will see it on the modem special replay. Look at this bang, retires, oh, yeah. gone. Massive sideways moment into La Source. He was never going to walk away with that one, and down to the uh, back of the pack, he will go. So he's now back in fourth at the moment, which will have 
I don't want to call it Scafey, but championship implications on this one as uh, this battle pack gets racier and racier and Jake Burden going to be getting a little bit more frustrated than he was before. So this battle just gets a new little degree of intensity to it as well. And look at the championship swing. We saw him on 1791. 1773 is the new number. The gap comes down. Brady Myers, if he can just find a little bit, find some more pace, he will be able to make an attempt on uh, attacking that championship lead a little bit more. The issue is Brady just does not have the pace. The cars behind have a little bit more pace than him as well. Andrew Gilliam actually second for this car on track at the moment. And he is the driver that is behind Brady Myers at the moment. So Brady Myers, he wants this championship, but unfortunately, I think he has to be looking backwards, not forward. Yeah, I mean, I'm really, I think he should really come into the pits now. I'm not sure if these guys i mean presumably these guys can make it to the end of the race from here we're pretty much bang on halfway um so i don't know why none of them have decided to come in for a pit the furthest car back is 43 seconds uh from the leader and with the amount of time that you spend in the pit lane here at spa you're definitely going to come out in free air so jordan ross our leader has not pitted sam sutton coming into the pits and looks like James Scott and Jake Burton are going to continue on. Brady Myers also continues on. Very surprised by that. I thought that he would be one of the people to uh, make a little bit of an alternate strategy here. He's got really nothing else to go on. So unless he's going for a, an overcut, uh, I'm not sure what he's going to be doing for the rest of this race. Not any other cars, though have come into the pits other than Brent and Hobson. So not many other contenders electing to pit at this stage. Actually, Jamie Stovold's just come into the pits as well. But for the most part, uh, a lot of our field have decided not to pit. And that could be because of the co uh, cool track temperatures. I mean, still lapping within eight tenths or seven tenths of the fastest laps. So um, cars haven't gone off too much, but I really thought Quite a few people would have taken a bit more of a jump at the undercut here. Yeah, I am surprised, especially with... I know it's a low track temperature at the moment, only 18 Celsius, so it's barely risen since the start of this race. But I am surprised that the wear rate isn't a little bit higher as well. To force that is talking about forcing and almost forcing a move there. Was Jake Burden into no-name corner, even though I think actually he has a name now. I'm not entirely sure if it's Jackie X corner. Who knows? It, it's one of the corners. But uh, nonetheless, James Scott really under a lot of pressure at the moment. And uh, speaking of under pressure, so are the retires of Jake Burden as well. Everything's under pressure at the moment as the race almost ticks over to the 50th uh, percent mark of this race. So that is where this race gets interesting. Where do the drivers split it? Is it a perfect 50-50 or is it an alternate 50-50 where they go longer in one stint or the other? We've already seen some dive into the pits. But uh, at the moment, our race leaders aren't really jumping at it apart from Sam Sutton. So I'll be interested to see how that one lap undercut does benefit him, especially if the tyres don't wear out as much in the second stint, which we should expect. But look at this with Dicey at the moment, getting his nose up where it doesn't belong, and cut off is Jake Burden. Almost a massive shot through Blanchimont. That is not a part of the circuit you need to pass. And I think what that tells me is they are both pitting on this lap, and Burden wanted to be the car leading into the pits they both lock up and indeed they do both come into the pits and uh, that is a unfortunate moment there for jake burden he wanted to lead into the pits it didn't quite happen and i don't know if it was lag or something else sack but i've got a feeling he got a little bit too close to that pit wall and uh, that could be a little bit of damage to that holden commodore yeah it's a bit hard to say um I can see on uh, the broadcast, it definitely looks that way. On my screen, uh, it looked a little less... Looks, didn't look quite as bad, but that was a big moment. <laughs> Whoa, look at the handwork there from Jake Burton. Very quick on the uh, on the catch there, but it was a bit, a bit crazy. He was there in the first place, honestly. But uh, that's where he wanted to be. He's the one fighting for the championship, and uh, he wants to make it. A little bit more difficult for himself. I can uh, I can respect that. Jordan Ross gets oh, away. Look Sutton at this. is going to take the race lead if he gets the momentum out of the corner. And Jordan Ross is not going to be able to do anything about it. By goes Sam Sutton. And with hot tyres as well, he's going to get a beautiful run up through Eau Rouge. 
and it looks like Brady Myers has also gained quite a bit of time on the leading pack as well. So he's 3.9 seconds behind Jake Burton. That's a lot better than it was before, but it's uh, not great. We do have a new race leader here, Sam Sutton. Didn't look stellar in the first stint, but was still within a good margin of our leader before the pits, Jordan Ross. Jordan has shown great pace and uh, really consistent driving in that car. He's going to have to work to get that lead back, though, so we'll see how he's able to do. But uh, Sam Sutton obviously sitting in that slipstream for such a long time and uh, also getting that undercut, which we were talking about, really paid dividends and... Again, very surprised that uh, Brady Myers did not decide to chew onto that one. Imagine where he could be, possibly just behind this man, or a lot closer to that man, Jake Burton, who leads him in the championship. And Brady looking for uh, new ways to get around this track a little bit faster. Not um, a professional Brady, but uh, usually the grass isn't the best option. Jake Burton runs a little bit deep into the S's at campus here. And he's still keeping up good speed in that car. But James Scott is also still ahead of him. So he's got a little bit of work to do in effectively what is fourth position. As I think we've uh, only got one car out the front of this field that hasn't pitted yet. Yeah, absolutely. Will we? Uh, yeah, no, you are indeed correct. Only one car, which is Steve Jansen at the moment. So we'll see what he can do at the moment as he does actually dive into the pits right on cue. So the 17 car dives in. And uh, he will resume his normal place on the circuit, wherever that might be in this race at the moment. With uh, still quite a couple of cars involved in some wars. Uh, currently still 22 cars lapping around the circuit. But uh, plenty of them with a fair bit of damage. But across the start-finish line, Sam Sutton and Jordan Roscoe. And then James Scott and Jake Burden, who are a lot closer as well. So those two have bunched up a little bit. And this could be a bit of a defining moment here. Because if Burden gets tangled up with James Scott in this battle, and look at him slide the car out of the source Brady Myers is not far behind either so that could be an opportunity if these two just keep continuing to fight a little bit let burn just use up his tires a bit more that might make something happen here at the moment so this is going to be a critical part of this race down the camel straight Jake Burn will go in the slipstream of the evolution racing team Commodore getting closer and closer every meter he gains another millimeter looking to the right it's going to be a big lunge if he goes for it he does go for it a massive move by Jake Burton just about pulls it up Scott wants to go around the outside go for the over under but the grip isn't there and the position is Jake Burton who slides it out of Lacombe through the right phase of that corner so another position gained by Jake Burton but did he use up a little bit more tires than he would have liked? And will James Scott be able to retaliate in any way, shape, or form? Brady Myers still lurking in the background there. And uh, in regards to the actual uh, pit exit outlap, uh, Jake Burden still pulled away by a tenth of a second on Brady Myers. So the pace still looks to be in the favor of Jake Burden. But you cannot count Brady Myers out if he looks after his tires. And Jake Burden goes in search of this race win and burns all of his rubber up. And his incidents, possibly, as well. He's been using quite a few off-tracks the last few laps. I've noticed he's uh, cut no-name corner on the inside there, which is a bit of a no-no in terms of uh, iRace things algorithm there. So, um, according... I mean, we, we know the timing's not always perfect, but it uh, does look like Jake Burton may have a few incidents, and according to me, he's continuing to rack them up still as he really is trying to push at the moment and he did rack up another one then coming out of Stavolo massively over the uh over the painted lines there and that's another easy place to do it coming through uh Blanchimon as well but not this time very nice on the brakes into the bus stop but Jordan Ross has really pulled in on Sam Sutton now so we need a little bit of a miracle here for uh Brady Myers he's got four cars up ahead of him that he really just needs to disappear and there is every opportunity for that to happen. If James Scott can pick up a little bit more speed, get involved in a battle with Jake Burton once again, or if Burton can catch up to the guys ahead of him in the next 10 laps and it all goes off, well, it's uh, it's not over till it's over, but a beautiful run from Jordan Ross. This is going to be a surely a position gain for him and uh, a change for the race lead. So much momentum out of Radion, and he 
Oh, he's going to be forced to the outside here by Sam. And Sam's not going to have any of it. But Jordan Ross taking the nice alone. He's going to go for a dummy up the inside there. Beautiful move from Jordan Ross. It's not quite going to work as Sam Sutton covers him off once more. But a, uh, a good little throw down the inside there from Jordan Ross. And just showing Ooh. Sam Sutton with a little bit of a bump that he's not uh, unwilling to get a little bit rowdy here. And now he's got a great run as they come down into Puan here. Sam already very defensive on that inside line. And this is going to check things up massively for Jake Burton as well. And also James Scott. And oh, this, this... Oh, it's not, it's not over this race, guys. It really isn't. As Jordan Ross goes to the inside. As they come through the S's here, side by side, he's going to have to go the long way around. No contact between the two. Very respectful. There's overlap. And they run wide on the exit there. Sam Sutton pushing the limits of the circuit here. And he's pushing Jordan Ross beyond them. And look how much closer the uh, trailing two cars there of Jake Burton and James Scott are. And of course, that's bringing... Brady Myers, who before the pits was over nine seconds behind the leader. That's come down to six and a half seconds now. In the last few laps, Jordan Ross still looking for a way past Sutton. And uh, it's all really starting to kick off. We've always seen early stints. The guys usually keep it pretty tame. But now that the pit stops have happened and it's all about track position, the only thing that they can do is fight to the very end. And... Uh, now is about the time they are getting started. It's going to be a very interesting final few laps here at Spa Francorchamps for the season decider here. And uh, Sam Sutton putting it all on the line at the moment to stay in the lead. 10 laps to go. That is all that remains here in this season of the Racing Official Championship. It has been a brilliant season. We've seen highs. We have seen lows and more than just meaning our rouge there. It has been a season that has packed it all. But what does the finale, week number 12, have in store? A showdown between Jordan Ross and Sam Sutton seems to be on the menu at the moment. But the chef just isn't delivering at the moment as Jordan Ross continues to pile on the pressure in the pressure cooker at the moment. And Sam Sutton just trying to handle the heat as he makes his way through the comp. And he is throwing everything he's got at this, but all the while... He defends every little position here, defends every little attack that John Ross throws at him. Jake Burden and his fellow red car, James Scott, continue to look closer and closer and closer. Brady Meyer is going to try and make something happen in this battle as well. And I have to say, they were very, very pacey last time around. Brady Meyer's second fastest car on track, only faster car than him was the driver behind Brady Myers, Andrew Gilliam and Brady Myers. They're making a charge, so even though it's a long way back, if this front pack continues to fight as Jordan Ross and Sam Sutton are at the moment, you cannot count them out for a second. Seven kilometers per lap is a lot around this circuit. There are so many passing opportunities straight to slipstream past your competitors, hard braking zones to dive it down, and as Jordan Ross proved as well, there is opportunities at every corner. Just because breaking into the first part of Lacombe seems like the obvious answer, there's nothing stopping you from trying at the second phase or the third phase of Lacombe either. This is a circuit that promotes racing, promotes passing, and promotes sim racing as it constantly puts on the action and makes a clinic of an action and a thriller for all of you watching at home. If you are watching on the iRacing Esports Network, Hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss what this championship throws up every single season. It is a fantastic one, and it is always going to deliver. As you can see now, the top six are in the same camera shot. There is nine laps to go here at Circuit de spa Franco sharps and the top six get closer and closer and closer. Brady Myers, three-tenths quicker than your race leader, Andrew Gilliam, an entire half a second. Yeah, this is starting to get uh, a little bit of, I don't know what it is, but it's starting to feel a little bit tense, at least in uh, in my part of the commentary booth here. Sam Sutton, Jordan Ross, Jake Burton, James Scott, and then Brady Myers and Andrew Gilliam. Three little duos here that have the potential to really open up something uh, pretty spectacular. And they all do seem to be cascading on each other at the moment. James Scott hasn't fallen away from Jake Burton after he was passed. 
just a few laps ago, still holding on to the current series leader. Andrew Gilliam's been looking spectacularly fast behind Brady Myers, and that could be difficult for Brady. It'll be interesting to see if it gives him the inspiration to push a little bit harder, or if he succumbs to the pressure and starts making mistakes with a faster car charging up behind him. And then we have this battle for the lead. Jordan Ross, who has led much of this race, who's looked very quick and extremely consistent and has looked so for the last couple of laps as well, but he's got one obstacle in his way, and that is the orange and black machine of Sam Sutton with that number 10 painted on the side. And uh, Jordan Ross in his Evolution Racing Team machine has been looking and diving and looking and diving, but nothing's been working for him so far. A good run down the back straight here through... Blanchimon might just get him the run into the bus stop that he needs. He's got good speed. He needs to carry it through the fast left-hander here. Scrubs quite a lot off. Didn't use as much exit there as Sam Sutton did. Sam carrying a lot more momentum through the corner. And that was just enough to keep him ahead of Jordan Ross one more time. It's been interesting that Jordan's been so consistent when he's been out front. But now that he's stuck behind Sam here, he's just not quite able to carry as much speed through some of these corners despite uh, the aerodynamic differences not being that great in uh, V8 Supercar. Oh, big slide there, and that's going to kill his run. But uh, he might have been a little bit too close already, so this isn't the end of the world if he can still hook up a good run through Eau Rouge and carry that speed over the top of Radion. It's not going to be too much of a worry for him. He's still got a lot of room to work with. Nice run. Probably not enough, though. James Scott got a nice run coming out of Radion as well. And he's tucked up just behind Jake Burton. Three tenths of a second, probably a little bit far, but still looming on the back of the minor Jake Burton with uh, seven laps to go here. So still about 15 minutes of racing. And these guys are putting every effort into catching up to each other. Corey Preston and Thomas McMillan. This will be an interesting battle here. Corey Preston flies to the outside with good overspeed, both late on the brakes. Thomas McMillan on the preferred line, though, will tuck in and retain that position with Corey Preston still having a little bit of a look in his JMSR machine. Not quite able to get it done. A little bit of a squiggle off the uh, exit of the corner, losing him momentum. Got a good run through there. Looking for a little bit of a dive up into no-name corner. Not quite. A little bit tight to do it there. And that's going to lose him momentum coming down to uh, Huon as well. And we've already, well, not already, but uh, we are still, I mean, we are quite a way into this race. But uh, we have had a DQ hitting the maximum incident limit is Mitchell McLeod. And it's very easy to do here at Spa. I imagine that there are quite a few drivers out there at the moment who are pushing the limits. Even one off track might be enough. Maybe just a four times, maybe a two times. Might be enough to uh, put all their left efforts for the last 40 odd minutes to rest very quickly. But uh, thankfully, these guys up at the front have been racing pretty smoothly. They'll have a few incidents up their sleeve and uh, might have the opportunity to use some for a bit of panel rubbing if they needed in the dying stages of this race. I really like that point you made on the previous lap, Zach. And if I can get the director just to focus on Jordan Ross at the moment. You mentioned that he was too close to the car in front. And if you're wondering what that means, why would you ever be too close to the car in front to make an overtake? That doesn't make any sense. Ara Rouge, it is a very interesting corner because you actually want to be far enough back on the exit of La Source, build that momentum all the way uphill through La Source, and again, probably a little bit too close for Jordan Ross, but it's a lot better this time around. Because if you are in that right little distance margin out of the source, it builds the margin through our Rouge, it gets you the speed down the Kemmel straight and allows you to make a move around the outside if you so wish. For the race lead, Sam Sutton and Jordan Ross, millimeter to millimeter, door handle to door handle. It is lap 20 and the gloves are off. Evolution Racing Team and Sam Sutton as a privateer banging doors at the moment, trying to make it happen crossing lanes at the moment as they fire their way into Ravage so late on the brakes goes Jordan Ross trying to make a move happen but there's no door open he sets up a move into Jack East corner can't do it either 
and this is the part of the circuit, especially in these V8 supercars, where the overtaking opportunities are an absolute premium. They are very hard to come by. So for Sam Sutton, he can breathe a little bit easier just to have a little bit of a relaxation moment before they get back out of Stavolo and battle their way all the way through into Blanchimont and the heavy braking zone into the bus stop chicane. What can Jordan Ross do? Can he manage to set himself up for a move on the back of the 21 radar holding Commodore at the moment? He is looking threatening. In the first hit, he was looking terrifying for pace. The rest of the field had something to worry about, but Sam Sutton, in the pit strategy, made something happen. He got that lead, and he hasn't let it go yet. And this is where it all matters for Jordan Ross, but he didn't get the exit he wanted. And look at the margin. Jake Burden closing in and in at the moment. Uh, this battle pack is allowing the top four to condense as Sam Sutton early on the breaks, which allows Jordan Ross to build the momentum out of the bus stop. And what can he do? He looks to the inside. No way through. Looks to the outside. Not late enough, but he gets the overlap at the moment. Can't hold it all the way through the bus stop chicane, though. So he's going to have to set up for yet another lap. So what can he do? Can he get himself into a nice run out of the source and build that momentum for the second lap in a row? He's going to have to hope so because he's only got six more attempts at this at the moment. The laps are ticking down. Season 3 of 2019 of the iRacing Official V8 Supercar Series is coming to a close here on SimSpeed TV. It's Jake Burden versus Brady Myers for the championship. It's Jordan Ross and Sam Sutton putting on an absolute clinic out front. And Sam Sutton with a beautiful run at the top of our rouge. No way through this time around, but Jake Burden and James Scott getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah, this is uh, typical of the iRacing V8 Supercars official series here. All four of our leading cars are separated by less than two seconds now. And uh, I mean, that's not unfamiliar territory for us, but these cars were very spread apart for quite a long time. And just as we are getting to the dying stages of this championship, it is all starting to heat up once again. Jordan Ross has been attacking relentlessly and that has brought Jake Burton and James Scott back into the picture. And if they keep on going, those two drivers behind Brady Myers and Andrew Gilliam could get involved. And that's when things start getting very interesting indeed. Brady Myers is the man that needs to finish inside the top two. And while it looks pretty far at the moment, with, he'll be looking down at that train and thinking anything can happen. I've got to go, 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 go. And uh, he has been doing so. He's been very quick the last couple of laps, matching the guys up ahead as Jordan Ross has a little bit of a look. He's very close at the moment, coming out of Stavolo now. He's going to have to go for a very good exit. Nice run, a little bit of a slide though. And he's now also got the added complication of having that car of Jake Burton just behind him as well. So he's gonna have to look forwards. He's gonna have to look back into this braking zone, into the bus stop as well. Very wide on the apex for Jordan Ross. He's gonna pick up an off track there for sure also. And uh, not enough of a mistake to really be under threat from Jake Burton, thankfully that time by. But this is really condensed now. We said two seconds before. Now the gap between the top four cars is 1.2. The gap back to Brady Myers from the leader is 4.8. And there's four laps to go. We easily know around here if you're battling, you can lose a second a lap so easily. Last time by for the leader is 21.4. Fastest lap for Sam Sutton is a 20.2. That's 1.2 seconds slower last time by than his fastest lap. Anything can happen in the dying stages of this race. And uh, with a couple of guys who are just here for glory, oh, it's going to be very interesting these last four laps. But uh, Brady Myers is really going to have to keep his head down if he has any chance of winning this championship. He needs to try and throw something, doesn't he? Or he needs a little bit of moment. Um, we can't say that Jake Burton is flawless. You think back to what I would say is our greatest race of the season. Throwback to Road Atlanta. Where was Jake Burton on the last lap? If you didn't see it, I'll tell you where he was. Backwards, losing positions, lost, I think, eight positions on that final lap. That happens today. That could throw the championship all away for Jake Burton. This is high stakes, high pressure here at Spa-Francorchamps. How is it all going to round out? We do not know as they round their way through a pull on Sam Sutton 
a lot wider than he would have liked to have been, which gives John Ross a little bit of a run at the moment. So he will get closer and closer, but Fungez is only an overtaking opportunity if you're extremely brave or like me and just send it. Incredibly stupid. But Jake Burden gonna have to try and find some way to get past James, uh, sorry, uh, the driver in front of John Ross. I'm getting my ERT drivers mixed up, but John Ross just not looking as feisty as he was a couple laps ago now that Jake Burn is behind. He has a lot more to think about. It's not just about getting that race lead. It's can I get the race lead without sacrificing, if it goes wrong, second place as well. Getting closer as they make their way into Blanchemont. You can see how race is going to be. There's not a gap on the outside, but he almost thought about it. Gets on the power nice and early. A beautiful exit of Blanchemont. Sudden goes sideways. But it's going to be a big dive from Jordan Ross. It's a bigger dive by Jake Burton around the outside. How's this going to go? It goes with contact with Jordan Ross. But they managed to escape all cleanly so far. And it's a drag race. He's trying to move over. But there's an overlap by the Evolution Racers. He's driving. They're getting closer and closer. Down the front straight. Almost contact under brakes in the La Source. Millimeter stuff. And Jordan Ross makes contact again. Jake Burton loses all kind of grounds. And there goes James Scott. He was looking for an opportunity, and great Scott, he got one. Evolution Racing Team, two cars on the podium, but can they get one of their cars onto the greatest opportunity on the podium? The top step, that is the answer, but Jake Burton, with a brilliant retaliation at the moment, getting close oh, to the Oh, Andrew Gilliam! Andrew Gilliam has just had a massive accident at the top of Eau Rouge while he was trying to fight with Brady Myers and Jake Burton goes to the outside of James Scott. Not able to make it work, goes back round the outside, but again, just not quite able to get it done. Trying to fire it down the inside. Jake Burton is really clutching at straws here. We are gonna get a replay of Andrew Gilliam, thanks to Modem Simulation and Cut. Sorry to cut across you there, Bo, but have a look at this from Andrew Gilliam. Classic overcorrect and a massive accident at the top oh. of Radion. Bang for Andrew Gilliam. That is as hard a hit in a V8 supercar as you will ever see. And thank goodness that he was sitting behind his sim at home and not in the real thing because that would have been an almighty accident. And uh, unfortunately that has ended quite a good battle, but it's really let Brady Myers loosen up a bit and now he can focus on chasing this four car battle at the front. Yeah, absolutely. No, no apologies at all needed for that, Zach. A massive moment for Andrew Gilliam and his season, which was looking so promising. He's been such a great competitor all the time in the 12 races prior to this. Unfortunately, the number 12 goes a little bit wrong. But John Ross going to have to try and make something happen as round number two on uh, Sam Sutton into this one. Jake Burden, what can he do? He's still attacking the Evolution Racing Team driver of James Scott. But now John Ross has a lot more breathing room now to fight for this race lead. Just down to three laps to go. And that is still six minutes of racing here at Spa. So there's still plenty of time to dice around. But in terms of overtake opportunities, they are beginning to run a little bit thin. But he's in a great opportunity now. We'll get the margin. 1.6 seconds. And potentially a look for the lead. Atlas. A brilliant move. If he can pull it off. Sideways on the exit though. And Sam Sutton. It's VTech Pro. And he is so much quicker. And will easily lead into our Rouge. John Ross has to be smart. Back out of it now. And make something happen on the exit. We'll see what happens. Contact made. Oh! Sam Sutton. All kinds of cross stuff over the change and now a brilliant run for John Ross gets closer and closer and this should be a slam dunk at the end of the camel straight breaking for Lacombe goes to the outside sudden squeeze and contact and then both in the wall a massive moment for John Ross how have they both kept it out of the wall I will not oh know a massive gosh. shun this is going off the final race of the season for the R Racing official supercars championship and the gloves are rough there is nothing that is going between these drivers right now. It is everything they have got. Sutton, Ross, got your top three. Jake Burden in fourth. A brilliant opportunity to perhaps win this championship. But he has to stay out of trouble. And I don't know about you, Zach. But at this front battle pack, all I smell is trouble. Oh, mate. It is absolutely crazy how close these guys are getting to each other. I cannot believe that Jordan Ross and Brady Myers were able to escape from that one. I definitely thought that they were both going in the wall, but he's oh. gonna have another crack, a little bit of a bump, and that is all he needs to get through. 
and now he's uh, Sam Sutton is going to have to defend from another Evolution Racing Team car, and that's going to check these guys up again. Brady Myers is just behind. He's within two seconds of Jake Burton, and uh, if these guys battle for another couple of corners, he's going to have the draft for the last two laps of this race, which will be monumental for him. He may be able to get this. He needs to come second. He needs for something oh. very bad to go wrong here. And it's looking very spicy. James Scott down the inside. Sam <laughs> Sutton contact. Jake Burton trying to go through. Has to check up as they come down in the bus stop. James Scott probably not going to try and give it up. Although he does have to. And now Brady Myers. Well, now he is most certainly in the slipstream. He is within firing range of Jake Burton. But he really needs... If all three of these cars were to come to grief and just spear off the road and Brady goes through on P2. The championship is his, but he's getting a bit too excited. A big lockup into uh, La Source there. He's going to kill a lot of his momentum. Luckily, though, he's still just holding within that draft range, so he's going to have it as they come up through Eau Rouge and through Radion for the second last time. Sutton's going to have to put on a monstrous defense because he's got Jake Burton perfectly in the slipstream. He's got James Scott who has the slipstream as well. They might even go three wide as they come down into the next set of corners here. James Scott's thinking about it, but he doesn't have any room to do it with. Jake Burton going to have to defend the position. And luckily for Sam Sutton, not having to put up any defense whatsoever. But Brady Myers is just there. He's almost right on the tail of his guys. And he's within a second, essentially, of the championship victory. Oh, this is so crazy. Sam Sun running very wide and looking a little bit uh, leery in these last couple of laps. This is going to go right down to the wire for season three of 2019. They are overdriving so much. There is not a little inch of these Dunlops left. They've got everything they've got done. There is nothing left. They are shredded to pieces, but Jake Burton's still going to try around the outside of Fungus. This would be a monumental move if he could pull it off side by side with the number five. It's the one and the five, and it's the number one that's going to try and come out number one, but he can't quite do it because he bursts in a wheel spin, overheats the tires, and Sam Sutton might be able to make this happen. Almost contact again. Jake Burton trying this, though, around the outside of Stavalot. A monumental move if he could pull it off. But again, can't do it. Sudden burst in a wheel spin. Burton goes by. James Scott trying to make something happen. Brady Myers buying into this battle as well. It is all going on side by side into Blanchimont. And I don't think either one of these two are backing out. Sudden does, though. He thinks the better part of Valor at the moment wants to make something happen, though. Whether he can or not is another question. His tires are looking very used. Brady Myers moving all over under braking, trying to make this happen. Looks to the inside of Sutton at the bus stop. Contact made, and they just about get away with it at the moment. Brady Myers will start with one final lap here in Season 3 of 2019. What can he do? Sutton looks to the inside of Myers. Can't quite do it, though. Contact is made, and they both run wide into La Source. And any chance Myers had of fighting with Scott and Burden might have just gone down the toilet, unfortunately for him, unless something happens between James Scott and Jake Burden. We've seen how aggressive these two are willing to get, and it's a slightly dodgy exit for Jake Burden, just bursting a wheel spin ever so slightly. Scott getting closer and closer down the camel straight. The draft is so powerful at the moment. The wind speed picking up, and it is 18 kilometers an hour, which is allowing Scott to challenge into Lacan around the outside. Contact almost made, they keep it clean though. And James Scott on the final lap takes it away from Jake Burden for position number two. Jordan Ross is absolutely loving this here. Absolutely bold to 2.8 seconds up the road. Burden wants to fight this back though, can't quite do it. Fighting behind, Brady Myers getting closer and closer. And if Burden throws anything at James Scott, this could go all horribly wrong at the moment. Brady Myers has cleared Sam Sutton though, so Sutton might be demoted to fifth at the end of this race after leading for so long in the second stint. Brady Myers still trying, wants to get closer to Jake Burton instead of struggling for traction out of Porn. Look at the body language of the car sliding the entire way through. Under brakes in a fung, yes, a massive braking zone, but it's all about finesse. Setting up your run bit by bit, carrying the momentum to burst out of Stavolo in just a few moments' time. But Burden's tyres are looking very second-hand. Second-hand is also the state of James Scott's apex. He did not make it 
and he's going to lose speed all the way down here if he doesn't get power down properly. Jake Burton burst in the wheel spin a little bit, but the speed is still good. Closing and closing, and he might have a chance in a Blanchimon. Where does James Scott defend? Burton actually on the brakes in the grass as well. What can he do? Through Blanchimont, it's going to be a dive into the bus stop. If anything is going to happen from here, it is championship deciding stuff, but it's not going to be position deciding stuff unless James Scott completely locks the rears. Congratulations to Jordan Ross on the victory, and it's going to be an Evolution Racing Team. One, two, Evolution Racing Team dominated Spa, Jake Burden, 2019. Season 3, RAC official, V8 Supercars champion, Zach, I'm throwing over to you because my voice is gone. I cannot believe how unbelievably close that got in the end. Congratulations to Jake Burton. Season 3, 2019, iRacing official, V8 Supercars series champion in the, uh, in the number 33. And uh, that is a great race from him very up and down but did exactly and just barely what he needed to do to take home the championship and i mean kudos as well to brady myers after the qualifying performance that he had you really couldn't have asked him to put any more on the line especially in that second stint i mean that was just unbelievable stuff from the top five there an incredible race and uh congratulations to jordan ross as well his first win of the season in uh season three 2019 but you said it earlier in the race Bo. spa produces you know it promotes good racing it produces good racing and we have had so many fantastic races throughout this season uh, it's only appropriate that we end on such a high note like that. Jordan Ross was the man to take it home for Evolution Racing Team. Big congratulations to them for a 1-2 with James Scott following just behind his teammate. Jake Burton makes it onto the podium and makes it into the record books with a second V8 Supercars official iRacing Championship title on his belt. Brady Myers came so close but he's going to have to try next time out. And uh, with the momentum that he's been carrying with his new team, remember he swapped teams earlier in the season and the momentum that he has carried since joining Zero Esports has been very interesting and will be definitely one to watch for the next season. Great race as well from Sam Sutton coming home in fifth position after leading a lot of that race. Brendan Hobson comes home in his favorite position for Sim Synergy Sim Racing. Corey Preston ended up in seventh with Steve Janssen making a good performance. 20th up into eighth for Steve Janssen. So great drive from him. Christian Smart for Gone Road Motorsports came home in ninth. And Jamie Stovold for Team Hyperdrive came home inside the top 10. A brilliant result for Brian Borg. Comes home in position number 11. He'll be happy to round out the season with at least some kind of result after what has been a little bit difficult of a season three for him. Sean Thompson wraps it up for position number 12 with Greg Sharp, Zach Baker, and Rob J. Harris, your top 15. And then it's only the top 18 that make it home on the lead lap, which includes Mihail Ladishov, Michael Kirkham, and Josh Perwin. So well done to Fens, as he's known on the uh, Codemasters side of things, but uh, well done to him for translating that onto iRacing as well. Andrew Gilliam, what can we say? He was so quick, so fast in this race, but unfortunately, R Rouge had other ideas with just three laps to go. Thomas Willen brings it home in position number 20, unfortunately, seven laps down. Mitch McLeod, the world's best sim racer, found the worst of the mm. off-tracks. Mario Vlasic in position number 22, Joshua Pickett, Craig Jones, Thomas Tins, your top 25, with Damien Johnston, Probably one of the more ho uh, high profile um, casualties of this race, it has to be said. But uh, nonetheless, a great result there, nonetheless, to uh, round out what has been a very nice season for Gone Rogue Motorsports. But it was Jake Burden who ended up walking away with this championship win. A fantastic result for Jake Burden. And uh, nonetheless, a fantastic result for uh, the entire season, I think, Zach. It has been an absolute cracker in season three. Yeah, I mean, I've been been commentating this for over a year now, I think. And um, 
I mean, every season has just delivered time after time, but this one in particular, we've seen some absolutely fantastic races. We uh, are going to bring our uh, championship winner, Mr. Two-Time iRacing Official V8 Supercars champion, Jake Burton, up into the booth. Jake, congratulations. That was a very difficult race for you, um, but you did everything that you needed to do to bring home the championship. Yeah, that's it. Um, I, I hate to correct you straight off the bat, but that's actually the first. I've never won a oh, really? championship before. Yeah, and uh, this is, uh, I've only really had one other proper crack at it since Scops became a thing. And I think uh, Bo Cubas actually won it that season. It was way back in 2016. But yeah, no, nah, I had a proper crack this season. A um, couple unlucky moments, which drew it out a little bit longer than I thought. Like uh, Road Atlanta really hurt me. Brody, Brady pretty much got back in it because uh, of that round. Uh, but yeah, awesome race tonight. Pretty much just tried to ensure that I finished in front of Brody and keep out of the mess that was going on in front. Yeah, it was pretty crazy watching you guys uh, battle up the front. We were pretty interested to see that uh, you kind of hung on quite a lot there. We we didn't think that you would battle as much as you would because you kind of only really needed to stay inside of the top five was that more of a you know strategic decision to get involved in the battle or did you just want to have a bit more fun oh i, I got involved in it early because I, I have huge trust for sam um so i knew he wasn't gonna but he wasn't gonna dump me um and jordan you know 90 percent of the time he's, he's pretty clean so i had a fair bit of faith in him and then of course james was just i think sort of just tagging on for the ride so yeah just tried to hang in there i, I really Got, got screwed in the pits to be honest I, I i don't actually really know what happened i was fuel saving but for some reason i had to take heaps more fuel and it wasn't like i had excess at the end either like i i just seemed to use a lot no idea why so yeah i, I think jordan and sam battling sort of brought me back into it but as i say my, my eye was just on brady the whole time i knew that if i finished in front of him it was a guarantee so yeah, well, I mean, he, he had a very poor start to the race. He obviously started down in ninth and he had to claw a massive uh, advantage or a massive advantage that you had. He had to claw that all back in and he did a uh, fantastic job and almost uh, got it done. Pretty amazing that you guys finished uh, four tenths of a second apart from each other after such a long race. And um, it has been an absolutely fantastic season. So thank you um for putting on such a great show with all the other guys out there um and is there anyone who you want to thank or any shout outs you want to give out for this championship um well first thing i'll say um is a lot of people often doubt the legitimacy of the vrs setup um now i know i'm sponsored by them but i can say with complete honesty that every single round other than road atlanta um, where I was on a completely different direction that Sam took us on with the Enduro for Scops. Uh, I actually was on an unchanged version of the VRS set. So uh, the set genuinely can win championships, uh, and that's the same across all their data packs. So massive shout-out to uh, to VRS uh, for, the, for the support and, uh, and putting out a great setup to help us win championships. Excellent. Well, Jake, congratulations once again. Very well-deserved. Some great racing all throughout that season. And uh, I'm sure that we'll look forward to seeing you out there next time. Um, we have so enjoyed everyone joining us this season for season three, 2019 of the iRacing V8 Supercars official series. It has been such a pleasure bringing all the action to you. If you thought we had a great uh, race tonight, make sure as well that you chuck a big thumbs up on the video and that you subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network and also jump over to uh, SimSpeed TV. Uh, we've been presenting the iRacing V8 Supercars official series for a very long time, and we look forward to continue bringing it to you for a much, much longer period of time, including next season, which will uh, give us a week break, so we won't be with you next week. Uh, but, but the week after, we will be back at it with these 650 horsepower Australian V8 supercars. Uh, but up from us up here in the commentary booth, once again, we thank you so much. My name is Zach Hanlon. Joining me in the commentary booth was uh, Bo Albert, Jay Kennedy, and also our series champion, Jake Burton. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night. Fantastic. This
This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rid of the outside of both of them. Maloney! Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God! These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. God, what?